let me welcome all of you to Workado's first webinar. And in uh, today's session, we are going to cover the troubleshooting tips and uh, try to make it try to make your Workado experience a more productive experience. Um, I'm hoping that most of you have, have had some experience with Workado. You have a account already and um, you understand the basic concepts because I'll not be go going over the absolute basic concepts. So uh, some housekeeping rules, you know, I will spend the first 20, 30 minutes going through the prepared material and then we'll take questions that have come in during this time. Um, and during the first 30 minutes, you know, keep yourself muted so we don't get uh, uh, disturbed um, and, and you can hear me clearly. Okay, let's get started. Uh, I will start with get logging into Workado. So that's my that's my home page, and whenever you log in, you get this page, and on this page you see the active recipes, you know the recipes that are running already, and you see your inactive recipes. So in my case, I have one active recipe going on, and 152 inactive recipes there. And uh, the other thing that you should always uh, um, know about is this thing at the bottom right, which is the help and support chat button, and here. You can uh, find people, you know, if, if someone is on chat already, you know, you can uh, write a note to them. And if no one is there, you know, just click on this support and FAQ page. And that takes you to the uh, the support page and FAQ page. Over here, you can uh, log your new tickets. If you have questions or if you have errors, you can log new tickets over here. You can also look for common, uh, you know, uh, issues, you know, errors you have found. You're trying to figure out how to do if conditions and so on. You know, you can find all your answers here. So if you go down here, you know, it's, uh, I'm having trouble. With the... So getting started, you know, that gives you the basic basic things. And then uh, building and testing recipes is where I think you'll find a lot of useful information. And best practices is the other one, which has uh, got a lot of the best practices that we have found useful. And, you know, if you think um, that there are other things that you do, uh, which are useful to you, please let us know and we will add it to this place. Also at the bottom, we have sections for um, apps, you know, specific app-related questions. Um, and you can see, you know, some under Replicon, some under Google Sheets and so on. And there's this new place called eBooks where we are uh, going to put uh, eBooks that we are writing up to make it easy for people to um, find out, you know, get started with a particular pair of apps or in a particular domain. So uh, with that, you know, if you and if, if you don't have this information, um, um, you know, and you don't you forget all of this. The one thing you always remember is that you can always write to us at support at workado dot com. All right. Uh, with that, let's get to um, the crux of this thing. So you know, I am um, I'm always trying to find out. I, I don't try to create new recipes if I don't have to. You know, um, so the first thing I always try to do is you know find some recipe which I can clone from. You know, someone has done something similar, and I want to find out you know if I can reuse that recipe. So what I do is I go to explore and I look for uh, the application I'm interested in. So for example, I'll go into Salesforce and over here I'll see, you know, okay, this thing has got 443 recipes and the popular connections are QuickBooks, Zero, Google Sheets and so on. Here are the experts who are there on um, Salesforce, you know, Huilin seems to be there, Alan seems to be there, and so on. And then there are uh, recommended recipes. And here you'll see a list of recipes. And on the side, some of them will say Workado featured, which means that, you know, we have looked at this recipe and think that it is worth, uh, ref, you know, worth promoting to other people. So you can go through this, you know, and, and, and below that you'll see what are the triggers and um, actions that are there for the recipe. And you can find if your action or trigger is supported. Now, with the, the key thing with Salesforce is that, you know, even if it is not listed here, you can get to it through the get objects um, or search objects uh, capability. But, you know, it's a good area to look at. But, you know, this is this is what I used to do. And it is useful to find out recipes that are, that are you know, tried and tested and I can, um, you know, clone from. So I can, um, you know, click onto one of these and look at the details and decide whether I want to use it or not. But, you know, I want to show you something which just recently came out, which I think is immensely valuable. It just came out this week. And that is this search for recipes button. 
And so over here, instead of going through the normal search that I showed you, what you can do is you can just key in your search conditions. So I'm saying so Salesforce QuickBooks, and I'm uh, looking for, uh, let's say, invoice related recipes, and it'll show me a bunch of recipes which have uh, Salesforce QuickBooks and invoice in them. I can also, you know, if I'm not interested in invoice, I can say accounts, and it'll now show me uh, recipes which are related to accounts, right? And if I know <clears throat> that I want to do account update, you know, then I can also put in update in there, and it'll now show me only update related recipes for Salesforce and QuickBooks and that deal with accounts. Uh, and sometimes, you know, for example, I, I uh, like Huilin's recipes, so I will put in the person's name too. And you can put that in and it'll bring me recipes that were created by her. You know, so like this, you know, depending on what you're interested in, you can find the right recipe. So let's take a look at, you know, I, I was looking for a recipe which uh, dealt with uh, um, transferring accounts between uh, Salesforce and QuickBooks. And this one, the top one looks like, you know, it's, it's a good candidate because it's doing update Salesforce account when QuickBooks online customers are updated. So uh, I'll click on that and uh, it'll take me to the details of that page. And I'll show you, you know, very high level overview of, you know, how to read recipes. So the first thing you see is, you know, the name of the recipe, uh, the person who created this recipe, um, how many people liked it, how many clones have been there for this recipe, uh, when was it created, uh, updated a month ago, and so it's been there for a while. And then I can see, I can read the description of the recipe. You know, sometimes they'll tell me that this is using custom fields or it's using custom methods and, you know, and so on. And so I can read through this and see, you know, if this will serve my needs. And then I go into the details of the recipe and say, okay, what does it do? It looks like it, it gets triggered on an updated customer. So whenever a customer is updated, you know, it, it triggers this recipe. And then it does a search for an account in Salesforce. Then it does a, a check on account name to see if the account already exists and if it doesn't exist it creates an account and if if it is if it is already there you know uh, i update the account so this looks like a you know general you know generally good recipe to look at uh, but let me look at some more and you know i remember that someone had sent me a recipe which was 7555 it was a featured recipe so i want to see you know if that is a you know good one to look at or not so i put in that and i click on return and it 755 comes up and I say, okay, this was a workout of featured recipe. Maybe this will be better. And here, because it's workout of featured, you know, some of these recipes have more detailed description, right? So you can look at this. But I, when I look at the details here, I see that, you know, this one doesn't do anything if it is present, right? If it, if it is present, it just sends email. Uh, so, I, you know, I don't like this recipe. So I want to go back to the previous recipe. And um, I can go back to explore and key in the recipe number for the previous one. And I can say, okay, let me use that recipe as a base. Um, coming up. And I decide to use this recipe, so I'll just clone it. And now what, when, what happens when I clone it is it, it's making an exact copy of this recipe as it is today, and it's going to put it into my account. And it says that, you know, clone is successful. We have connected the a recipe to an Amlan Salesforce account, the recipe requires a connection to QuickBooks. And sometimes I don't, you know, I don't look at all of this stuff and said, oh, it's cloned, let me just try and run it, right? So the first thing I'll try to do is, you know, run it. And when I try to run it, it throws a bunch of errors. So, and you may, you know, sometimes you may see these kind of errors also. So first thing it is telling me is that the trigger connection info is incomplete, you know, is missing input required field since. And the second error is app connection info is incomplete and QuickBooks is not connected. So I'll go and look up on the recipe. And now, you know, because of these errors, the recipe was not started, right? So I'll go, go and look at the recipe. And it says, ah, QuickBooks is not connected and the, the since the thing is not given and the, the since parameter is not set. So I'll set it to an, an hour, you know, look to look back an hour. Now, if you want to know more about this since, you can always go to the, the support. Um, and, you know, you can look for the, you know, what does it mean? Um, default trigger, look back time, since parameter in it. Over there, it, it discusses a lot of the uh, details of, you know, what are the different uh, default times for different applications and how do you, uh, how, how do they, uh, how do, uh, how often do recipes check for trigger events and so on. So that's a good place to go and, you know, if you don't understand something, you can go and check for, check for it over there. So I checked, I put this in, the since parameter, and then uh, I will try to run it again. And I forgot that I have to do the QuickBooks connection. So now it prompts me and, and says, you know, QuickBooks connection is not connected. So I can click here at the bottom and say configure. 
and it'll take me to this app connection area. And, and it says that, you know, you should define, you know, Salesforce is connected, but the QuickBooks uh, connection is not there. And for QuickBooks, it's going to use OAuth. So I'll say connect. And it will come back with a QuickBooks screen, a challenge screen. And I will put in a QuickBooks account that I know about. And sign in. And then I have to authorize it. So one thing to note here is that, you know, if you are using a smaller screen, right now you're on full screen. Sometimes you're on a, uh, on a smaller, you know, uh, screen. The authorize button sometimes is at the bottom and you may not see it. So you have to scroll down to see. Uh, but, you know, here is fine. I'll authorize it. So now looks like I have both the connections set. So I'll give it a shot again and say start. And one trick I think many of you know is like, you know, uh, you can start and stop or you can refresh from the top, you know, and it'll refresh the details of this page quickly. Um, but, you know, uh, some time has gone by and it's still not picking up anything. I'm stopping and starting and refreshing it, getting desperate, you know, what's going on. And then I realize that maybe something is wrong so let me stop it and maybe this since parameter is not right so let me increase the since parameter to not look for the last hour but let me look for the records which came in last week and you know then save it and see what happens now you know typically when you do the, the change and you start it does an auto save but i am uh, you know i don't trust things always i do a save and then try it myself you know and then do the start so now let's do a start, and hopefully it'll come back with some good results. Well, it came back with some results, but not so good results. So it looks like all of them failed for some reason. So let's look at it, and it says uh, no such column email on object account. So it's saying that you know there's there's a field which it is trying to update but it doesn't exist so i click on that and it takes me to this job history detail screen and i can look at it and say okay it found a record there an updated customer and the customer was there in salesforce so i want to update it in salesforce but if i go down i see everything looks fine but what's the problem you know so i look at that and it says again the same you know the same error shows up here there's an invalid field so when it shows such an error, it typically, you know, you know, most often it is because you have not defined this field in your Salesforce instance. And this is very typical of Salesforce in particular, because many people customize their Salesforce fields, they customize their Salesforce, uh, you know, they use custom objects. And if you are cloning a recipe, you have to be careful to, you know, understand that, you know, the, the recipe you cloned may not have, may have used custom fields, and, you know, you cannot use it as, use it as is. So what I now go do is I stop the recipe and go and take a look at what's going on here. You know, step five had that error. So I look at it and say, okay, let's see, where is that email address? Oh, and sure enough, it says custom field here. You look at the bottom and it says custom and it says email. And so, you know, there's no easy way right now. We are looking at how to automatically refresh this field to reflect your uh, view of the account you know, because this is looking at the account object and, you know, how do we automatically update your view of the account? But right now in the, in the, uh, you know, you know, uh, if you have to fix this thing, what we do typically is, you know, uh, I look at what are the things that I had mapped. So account ID um, in the find by ID web address and, um, and uh, down below I had the, oops, now down below I had the email. So I go and I change the action. You know, I will, I will to just to make it refresh, what I do is I will go and instead of update account, I will say, you know, create account and, and, uh, and then I'll go back to update account, you know, and, and what this does when I do that is, uh, 
um, it'll it'll get my definition of the account and I will see these things. But the downside of it is, you know, it has taken away all the fields which were there. So I have to re-add those fields. So here, you know, you can see find by name and, and uh, account name, everything has not been blanked out. So if you remember, you know, I had a, um, you know, the find by name is a required field. And here, you know, I can toggle it. I can do find by name or find by ID. So let's say find by name and I can put in, so, when I'm putting in the values there, you know, I know that the field that came in from QuickBooks was the updated customer field. So I'll put that display name there. And, and then I will um, update the email field if necessary. Although I don't need to, you know, um, I can add it if, if necessary. You know, you can add as many fields as you want. And then uh, now that this is done, I can say, okay, let's give it a shot and see, I'll save it again. I think the scroll goes the other way. Uh, and start it again. And I refresh it again. And I see that there's nothing new which showed up. You know, all of these records are from the first pass. 11.32 is when all of them ran. So why didn't it pick up any of this, uh, the records which are there? And this is something interesting to know, this is something important to know, that when a trigger runs, it picks up all the fields that it had found, you know, it had, uh, that is, you know, satisfies the condition, which is account updated. But once it has processed them, once it has seen that record and decided that, you know, uh, that it was okay, it doesn't go back and pick those records up again. So one of the things that you can do when you see something like this, you can say that, okay, let me just rerun the job, right? So I can go and rerun this thing and say repeat job, and I can say repeat. And it's processing that job. And that too failed, right? It came back and said it's the same error as before. Uh, why is that? You know, um, I, I changed the object, you know, I changed my recipe, uh, and it's still failing. So the reason for this is when you rerun a job and the and the recipe is still running it picks up the old definition so what i have to do is i have to stop the recipe and then i have to rerun the job and i rerun it again let's see what happens now so now you know it worked okay right so it it uh, it did a uh, update of the customer and if we can go into the details, uh, you can see that, you know, it, it got that and it went to update account and, you know, everything was fine. So that, you know, is showing you, you know, how uh, you can deal with errors, you know, how you can use the job history to, um, to look at what is wrong and, you know, what are the possible errors that can be there and how to do a, um, a rerun of the job. Uh, when to stop the job and when not to stop the job. Actually, you know, you should always stop the job before you do a resubmit. I think that's best practice. The other thing sometimes I do is uh, sometimes I would just, uh, you know, which is sometimes easier and, and, you know, some of you may have seen me doing this, is I will make a clone of this job and rerun the whole thing again. And when you do that, when you make a clone and rerun the whole recipe again, it'll pick up everything <coughs> yeah, that, uh, that, that was there because, uh, you know, for the clone job, it's a new job and it has not seen any of the old recipe, uh, the old records before. So it'll pick up all the four records that this first recipe picked up and process them, right? So that's another thing that you can do, you know, is uh, clone and then run it again. And um, and many times what I do, you know, I, I will not create a full recipe like this. If I'm building a long recipe, I'll break it up and, you know, instead of entering new data all the time, I will just clone it and run it and clone it and run it and then when I'm ready, I'll, I'll make them real and, and run it again. So that's, you know, I took you through one cycle of, uh, you know, how to make, how to clone a job and make it run. But the same thing applies to when you're building new, new, re new recipes. Uh, there are some other um, s common errors that I want to take you through, uh, which many of you may have faced. So let me go to my recipes and I'll create a new recipe and show you some of these errors. So one common one is like, you know, um, let's, let's start with a, you know, a basic timer. And what this is saying is that, you know, every so often just do this action. And what I'm trying to do here is I will look at a Google sheet 
and this is a very common area. I think many people have faced this problem. I'll look at a Google Sheet, and I'm trying to add a new row. And let's see, uh, is it demo? Demo for Google Sheet for contacts. So I uh, select this Google Sheet, and I want to add to it. You know, I want to write something to it. But you know, uh, when I select this, you know, none of the fields come up. You know, it is supposed to show me the fields that I can write to Google Sheets, but when I do this, you know, it doesn't show me any of the fields. And the reason for that is, uh, if I go to Google Drive, and is this my Google Drive? Let's see, uh, demo, demo Google Sheets for contacts. And you see that, you know, I have defined this Google Sheet, but I have no data in there, right? So. There's another one I can use, another different Google Sheet, and I have another one which I had created for this purpose, and I do this. And now it shows up all these fields, right? And there's no difference between this field and the other one, except that, uh, let's say copy of demo Google Sheets. And what I've done is I've put in one line of dummy data in the first you know, as the first line. And the reason for this is that, you know, whenever Google Sheets comes up, it tries to show you example data. And if it cannot find that example data, then, um, you know, it, it uh, somehow, you know, we are trying to, you know, we'll fix this, but, you know, right now this is the way out. So you just put a sample data. So, you know, this, if, you know, if you had this problem and you did not have any of us next to you, you can always go to support and you can look for, you know, Google Sheets and it'll show you setting up your Google Sheets to work with Workado, and you know it'll show you all the details of why this was happening and how to set it up, right? And in, you know it show it tells you that you have to have a sample sheet, and that um, it should have uh, uh, you know we have given you an example of a sample sheet, and that you know that the second row uh, should have some kind of data, right? So similarly, you know um, there are other types of errors that you see commonly. Uh, another common error that we find. Uh, people uh, make mistakes with are uh, nested if conditions. You know, we have, oh, sorry, uh, so let's go back, so nested if. So this is, you know, when you're doing conditional scenarios in your recipe, you know, let's say that I want to, um, let's say this, this was slightly different recipe, and instead of doing a timer, I am doing a, let's say, Salesforce. Uh, account account created, and I want to do some action. Um, add a new action, and instead of doing a basic action, I want to do a conditional action, which is where you know the if condition comes in. So I want to say you know if the one of those fields, if the uh, let's say you know the account name contains something you know is uh, ends with let's say corp you know, it is a corporation, then do something, right? Uh, so I do that, and uh, and uh, um, and then, you know, it tells me what action to take underneath. But sometimes what, by mistake, what people do, you know, they will add a new action here. Now, when you do a new action here, you see that the indentation is not right. Right, this one is happening under the if condition, but this one, this uh, line three, is not happening under the if condition. So you may write this whole thing up, and you know, uh, and you'll see that this condition is always happening regardless of whether the, the account name ends with corp or not. And that is because you know, it's by default, it is going to this one and doing this action. So whenever you want to do something under a nested condition, and you know, you should go to, uh, you know, you should go to the side panel uh, things. And you know you should add you know below or above like that. So this condition, for example, will happen under the if. This condition four is going to happen regardless of whether the if returned a good or a bad uh, result, right? So I don't want this one. And again, you know, if you want to find out more about it, you can uh, you know look at these articles here in the Fresh Desk or you know in the in our solutions page, and it'll talk to you about all the different details of how you can implement nested if conditions. Um, uh, another similar, you know, if related question that is there is uh, how people use if conditions, right? So the one I showed you, it, it shows 
uh, account name condition equals something. And, and I've seen people do this, you know, as they'll say, if uh, equals, you know, let, let's say, um, let's say I don't used to want to use account, let's say type, right? Or, or let's say some other, uh, how do I say? This definition got stuck for some reason. Okay, let's go to a boolean somewhere. Sometimes you have a boolean. Uh, okay, so let's so say I'm trying to see if it is a deleted or not. And sometimes people will do is deleted equals yes, you know, and they'll put that in and try to uh, you know run this condition. And you know it looks perfectly all right. If sales sales account created deleted equals yes, then do something, and it'll not run properly, right? And the reason for this is that, you know, if you look at this deleted flag, it is actually a Boolean. You know, if you see these two dots next to it, it can return it can return true or false. So the right way to handle this is to say is true, you know, or is not true. So if deleted is true, then do this. You know, that's another condition that typically people will make mistakes in and, you know, not know why the recipe is not working correctly. Uh, there's another common error that I want to talk to you about, which happens between Salesforce and QuickBooks. You know, Salesforce, uh, uh, you know, the date format between Salesforce and QuickBooks sometimes is not um, the same. So sometimes you will look at it and say, um, you know, you, you will look at the errors coming back and it'll say, something like this, you know, can't can deserialize instance of date from value string, you know, something like that, using the, you know, um, uh, you know, if, when you're trans transferring a date from um, um, Salesforce to QuickBooks or QuickBooks to Salesforce, you know, you may get an error like that. So the, this brings us to another, you know, advanced topic, but uh, I think it's worth knowing for at least this, condi uh, this particular condition, is that when you have something like that, you can convert a date to, uh, you know, you, you can convert a date to a, uh, sorry, you can convert a string to a date. And the function to use is uh, called to date. You know, so in this particular case, if you see invoice date has transaction date, and then it has a dot and it says to date. And also, to, you know, you should note that, you know, on this side, on the right hand side, instead of saying, you know, text mode, it is saying FX, which is the function mode. And to do that on any recipe, you know, when you go to any recipe, uh, let's just pick one recipe. Um, let's see my recipes. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, let me pick one where there's an updated. Let's look for one which has an update on something. Yeah. You can see that there are lots of clone of clone of clone. Uh, so I'll just pick any recipe and go through that. Um, when you do this create account, you know, and you, it asks you to map these fields, you can always do show more. This is another thing which is, you know, useful for you to know, is this show more and show less. Sometimes you may not find the field you're looking for, and it's in the show more, show less area. So you just click on that and it'll, you know, show you more. Um, and, you know, whenever you have something like this, it'll be a toggle, you know, you can fill in values, or you can, um, go to something like this in our account site. And right now it says it's in a text mode or I can switch it to FX and I can say, um, let's say I want to do, for example, and I can say display name and I want to um, capitalize it, you know, something like that. Or I want to, um, you know, I want to look at uh, family name and I want to check to see. See, and you see at the bottom it says, you know, what are the possible errors? I can say, uh, down case it, you know, and so on. So here, you know, anytime you want to use functions, you know, the first thing you do is, you know, you go to the function mode, you click in the value you want, you put uh, dot, you know, as the first thing, or you can also do alt space like it said before, and you can pick any of these functions which are there at the bottom. And there are more advanced things, and you know, we have a, uh, if you go to the uh, support section, you can find details on uh, more of these function things. So that's, uh, how much time do we have? No more time? Okay, sorry. So, all right, we'll wrap it up here and take questions. And, you know, I just wanted to point out some other things on our uh, support page, if you go there. Uh, so, you know, you can put in all of your questions here, and if you don't find it, if you don't find the answer to your question, do send us an email, you know, or log a ticket on the support site. And there's an, another thing which we are trying to, you know, starting to do, which I think um, 
uh, we will put in one today, for example, is this whole thing called eBooks, where we will talk about all the common recipes for a particular area, for example, QuickBooks to Salesforce or QuickBooks to uh, Salesforce to Zero, or you know, uh, event uh, event management uh, recipes and so on. So whenever you're um, looking for you know inspiration or you know how to where to copy from, you know, come over here and look at uh, look at things. And uh, if you don't find it again.